good morning sir before we move uh, and i think to put up the pass up but then i only have to I'm a child of God, and I love God because He loved me first. I will seek His kingdom. I will seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. For I am in the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special child, that I may proclaim. the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light amen yeah so uh there's an interesting thing that has happened this morning and that interesting thing that which we will discover hopefully you will also discover something that has happened this morning when when the word of god comes two times which is somebody is sharing a word and it comes two times to you what do you think about it if it comes two times the same word somebody has given to you two different people the lord wants to speak to you okay amen there's no confusion in there okay a uh, little bit on from the just want to take a few uh, minutes on what we what we have learned last week um, that is uh, that was shared by venkat 3 weeks ago that's about the influence of the kingdom of god okay and when we uh, before we go ahead let's pray Let's bow our heads, uh, Father God. We come before you today, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have kept us alive. We should thank you that you we are able to come into your presence, Lord, to worship you amongst your people, amongst your throne, in for your throne, O oh God, along with your angels, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the time of worship that you gave us. We pray that you would, Lord, lead us, Lord, in the time of word. Uh, we pray that you would speak to us. Lord minister to us heal us restore us oh god father we pray lord may more than anything lord that may your word draw our attention oh god draw our heart and minds to you lord lord we commit the rest of the time into your hands we pray okay so um uh, influence of the kingdom of god okay so uh if i may ask a question like two three can shout only two or three i know everyone will want to shout but only two or two or three of us can shout who has been the most influential person in your life all answers can be right don't worry about it but you can shout give a shout who has been the most influential person in your life okay my mother okay her grandma where husband okay oh wonderful husband okay pa- pastor wow <laughs> great so all the right answers right so there there is somebody who influence our life there is somebody who whom we look up to there is somebody whom uh we like them like we enjoy the company when they are around we enjoy the company when they are in the hall 
like probably we rejoice maybe you know we don't get chance to talk to them but we are so happy because they are there you know we look up to them in some really so in the kingdom of god we are ought to uh, we should be looking up to god right we should uh, our influence should be god and his word right uh, just like we read uh, you know while jesus was addressing his disciples you know he used two strong metaphors to describe their role in his kingdom namely salt and light so any memory that you have from these two words what is salt and what is being light is so important for us to you know have this uh points to be understanding right uh matthew 5:13 it says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled now salt here we most of us use in our day to day thing like yeah uh anybody who enjoys food without salt anybody not me but she didn't raise a hand <laughs> don't disclose that <laughs> less salt <laughs> right so as salt is important for our daily you know daily use like without which the food will be bland right we cannot it's not palatable we cannot eat uh, but it also has its importance because without salt our body would get imbalanced yeah so a salt is required but we are called to be salt now the world that we are living in is decaying it's already you know uh decaying and it's already getting worse it's not getting better but we his children are called to be the salt in the world we will see another verse in uh, matthew 5 14 to 16 it says you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden now you are the light of the world it says just like it was dark here you know raghu came and lit lit up right so now everyone can see me just imagine like we come in the evening time 7 o'clock and there is no power and you are in the hall it will be pitch dark it, it will be like maybe you will not be able to see your own hands right but even a little torch a small light a mobile light will spread the light in this room and you will we will we will start feeling ease okay something i can see i know where it is so we are called to be the light of the world now the world is in darkness is is decaying and is in is in dark but jesus is calling telling his disciples that you are to be salt and you are to be the light some interesting points that i want to uh share you know jesus gives a uh, christian both a great compliment and a great responsibility when he says that we are the light of the world because he claimed that title for himself as he walked this earth time and again we see him different references john 8 the a uh, couple of them here for you john 8 12 and uh, john 5 9 9 5 uh, okay we we see that through the gospel or through the book of john also when we were going through in our cell group we see that he says i am the light of the world i am the way the truth and the life second jesus never challenged us to become salt or light he said you are the salt and light so there is no option and this reminded me to the great commission in matthew 20 19 was the great commission go and make disciples of all nations there also there is no option he said if you want to go you go 
It's a commission given to us. It's our responsibility to go and make disciples of all nations, tribe and tongue, teaching them to obey the word of the Lord, teaching them of the word of God. So Jesus never gave the challenge. You know, it's not an optional thing that you want to be salt, you want to be light. But if you choose to be not light, not salt, you know, if you choose uh, with a, the way, with a lifestyle to not be salt in the world, in the, in the surrounding that we are in, then we lose the saltiness and it's of no use. And it's, uh, as it says that, you know, it will be trampled down. Now, Jesus, uh, when we receive him in our life, you know, the, the light of life is in our life. And he says, I am the light. Now you are the light. You receive the light from me and you be the light in this world. You be the light in your house. You be the light in your offices. You be the light in when you're traveling, journeying. But you are the light. So we have, we are the salt and the light. A key thought in both the pictures of salt and light is distinction. Salt is needed because the world is rotting and decaying. And if our Christianity is also rotting and decaying, it won't be of any good for his kingdom. Regarding light, light is needed because the world is in darkness. And if our Christianity imitates the darkness, we have nothing to show the world. Right? If we are living in sin, if we, are, if we ourselves are not walking that path of being, you know, uh, what God has called us, of being salt and light, then we are, ourselves are in darkness. And when we are in darkness, how can we share the gospel? How can we be the light? How can we be the salt? And they will not know. To be effective, we must seek and display the Christian distinctive. We can never affect the world of, for Jesus by becoming like the world. So Jesus said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. All right. So that's very, I think, a lot of points that Venki has covered. So uh, I will not go into much detail there. But, you know, at the contrary, just wanted to share this points where uh, I was even touched while preparing uh, this work. That if our life is not reflecting what God has called us out to be, if our life is not you know, changed from within, that means there is still darkness in us. That means there is still, you know, we are not completely surrendered ourselves to God. And the danger is that we might fall into the bucket where at the end, Lord, uh, you know, when the day of judgment comes, we will say, Lord, we have done this. We have followed you. We did so many things. We prayed so many times. But the Lord will say, I don't know you. So it's a matter of great concern. Uh, I was concerned for my life. Because when I look back, you know, people who influenced my life, at each stage, there were certain people God brought into my life who allowed me or who encouraged me to walk the path that God has led. And it's important for all of us that th there should be somebody who we are talking to. There should be somebody whom we are connected to. Maybe, you know, not hourly basis, but at least weekly ones or as much as possible, so that they can lead us, they can, you know, uh, take us in the right path. But this calls us out to, uh, you know, be accountable also. It, it calls us to be vulnerable, because if we don't share, we will not receive the inputs, right? If, if we don't, it's like, just like what we have, right? If you don't share your problem statement, you will not get a solution. Yeah. So we need to share a problem. Trusting God who has placed them, you know, above us. Trusting our leaders, trusting, you know, uh, people who are assigned that 
uh, are, are told that you know these are the people whom you can go and uh, share and you know have the discipleship it's not that uh, but this is not shared because you know that people will know about you what is wrong what is right you know what is rotten or what is worse but it's just to you know fulfill the work of god in our lives just like it says just like we read the promise of god right that we are removed moved from the darkness kingdom of darkness into a marvelous light so that we are our darkness is not clinging onto us our darkness is not pushing pulling us down and down it helps us to grow that leads me to uh, another topic the cost of the kingdom now what we uh, what is the costliest thing that you might have you know what do you think is the most costliest thing in the world any shout outs what is the most costliest thing in the world according to you for me like to to start off kick start the discussion like say gold sorry diamond okay yeah why not it's a discussion so we can share <laughs> love oh bullseye <laughs> sorry <laughs> cherish sorry for women yes yeah <laughs> sorry uncle character oh yes wives <laughs> wives shelly wives <laughs> acha okay <laughs> you know there's a cost <laughs> and the most costliest thing is love sorry salvation yeah faith yes so cost can be defined you know in what we are looking for like what we are discussing and what we are aiming for so but today we will look at the cost of the kingdom yeah so what is cost what is the cost that we have to pay in the kingdom of god there are various things uh that we need to you know go bear so for the introduction part uh, let's read from second kings 527 if somebody can read uh and the mic can be passed on please somebody is already there can read second kings chapter 5 verse 27 wow i'm talking about cost but what is this <laughs> Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elijah's Elijah's presence, and he was leprous as white as snow. Does something click, uh, trigger in your mind when we read this verse, last three, four verses, as white as snow? Any other reference in the Bible? Yes. Jesus came to make us clean as white as snow. Right? The blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross and in him we are made as white as snow. Our sins were so dark, so green that here in Eben, you know, uh, he got Gehazi 
Gazi caught the leprosy. These are the shocking words that end the story of Gazi, who was a disciple of Elisha. In earlier days, Elisha was a disciple of Elijah. Elisha, we know the story of Elisha, that he followed his master. He followed wherever he went, wherever Elijah went, he, he would follow. He would not leave Elijah wherever he went. And that we can see in the in Second Kings. Right? This is nothing but the role of a servant. He was ready to do anything. He was ready to, his, his role was, you know, to pour water on the hands of Elijah. That was his role. That was the role of Elijah earlier to start with. He was ready to do anything. In fact, the first time Elijah threw a mantle over Elisha, it was mantle of servanthood. You can see that reference in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 and 21. Can we read that? 1 Kings uh, 19, 19 to 21. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shapat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Right. In doing so, he dedicated himself to this new ministry of being a servant of Elijah. But that also meant that he burnt the bridges behind him and wholeheartedly he followed Elijah. So the cost is one of the costs that we need to see. One of the costs that we need to, you know, look at is following following wholeheartedly. We cannot be half-hearted. Like we cannot be the seasonal-hearted people. Like if there is raining, then we'll do something. If it is hot, we'll we'll behave in some certain manner. If things are not favorable for me, I will not talk. You know, I will not do anything. But Elisha, we see here that he burnt all the bridges and he followed Elijah wholeheartedly. Three times he spurned the offer to, to glory to stay back at Gilgal, Bethel and Jericho. Instead, he continued to follow his master Elijah and served him. At each of the place, there was a school of prophets or an open ministry. They would have gladly accepted Elisha as the new dean of the college or a replacement for the prophet Elijah, but Elisha refused. He never wanted to overtake his trainer's role, right? His leader's role. Now, Elijah was his guru. He was following him, right? He was following him like his guru. He was following everywhere. And Elisha, we can say he was his chela. So he was following his guru. There was a place where they gave him like the position of a guru, but he, he said he refused. And that's mentioned in 2 Kings 2, chapter 2. We can, we can read it later. But his continuous service enabled him to obtain even greater blessings, namely to receive a double portion of his master's anointing. Even as Elijah had performed seven miracles, Elisha performed 14 miracles. This anointing came to him in the form of a mantle that belonged to his master. Now the first time he received a mantle, it was a mantle of servanthood. The second time he received a mantle, it was a mantle of power. To be a servant is costly. Like if we have to, for example, say, you know, we have to, uh, if we are given, assigned a person, you know, we need to serve them. We need to, you know, uh, spend time with them. We need to take care of them, of the need or, or whatever the situation they are in. You know, we need to play the role of a servant. Are we willing to do that? It's not easy. 
being a servant of god or being a servant you know to do the appointed people of god is not easy it's like you're putting ourselves you know our selfless our self worth we're putting trying to put it at rest because there are situations where uh, we might be you know you know like a situations where we, we we may not be imagine or you know even or aware of but at that moment we have to go through those situations we have to follow the instructions now helisha here we see that you know he he followed elijah wholeheartedly if he had no doubt of what is he doing you know he he was ready but according in as per the kingdom of god as per the word the written word of god only the doorway of servanthood leadership is released you know if somebody wants to be say i can be a better leader i can do a great job than what you know the current leader is doing or i can be a good team manager or a good hr or a good uh, director is through the process no one is placed directly at that level right we join as trainees interns associates senior associates leads managers assistant managers managers that's that's the corporate the ladder that's there but even in the kingdom of god if you want to become a leader first you have to serve and we have to serve wholeheartedly for jesus said that he who want to be a great that he who he who wanted to be great must be the servant of all that's jesus saying right now gehazi was a disciple of elisha he could have received a double portion of what elisha had yeah even as we unfold this story he would have received it but gehazi was impatient he was he could not you know you wanted to be on a fast track we are on an instant world two minutes noodles you know the instant coffee gehazi was impatient he had his own agenda he wanted to quickly cash in on another man's ministry now elisha you know he wholeheartedly followed elijah he walked he went with him he saw him he observed him he learned and he was doing those things in his life but here gehazi who was kind of you know saying like now elijah was uh, elijah was here elisha was reporting to elijah now gehazi reporting to um, elisha but now this guy has problem he was very impatient he wanted quick whatever elisha was doing he wanted to overtake that you know you wanted an overnight fame he wanted to be satisfied in the now and could not wait so gehazi was always in the now if the if you see at the current world is now right everything is now we can't wait for two days now the question is like why to wait that's the state we are in if we tell our children if if our parents would tell us ki okay fine you know i'll uh, whatever you want you will get in christmas time or so and so time we would patiently wait and look forward but now if you tell our kids why so long what is the reason they want they have so many questions it's so a very the trend that is the world is moving is you know in a very different direction they they are moving they are in the now they don't want to think they don't want to persevere because when you persevere you know you build character when you build character you know the benefits of that but in doing so gehazi failed to catch the heart of his master elisha one he was impatient second 
you lived in the moment now. Third, he failed to catch the heart of his master. Right? He failed to understand his Lord and the principles of the Lord's kingdom. So instead of receiving a double portion of his master's anointing, he receives Naaman's leprosy. That's where we you know, read the introductory part. What does it mean to, you know, when we say meditate? I think Rakesh Bhai took a lot of time in this word, Matthew 6, 33. Like, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And Matthew 16, 24, he says, anyone who wants to follow me, let, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's a cost to be part of the kingdom, in the kingdom, lead the kingdom. You know, to, to be part of the kingdom, we know we don't have to do anything because Jesus did for us, right? He paid the price already. He shared his blood, his body. He went through the process of, uh, painful process of walking to the cross. But he said to us that you are the salt and light. You be my agents now. You be my people in this world. But if we are impatient, if we are, you know, we want to overtake each other, if we think of very high of our own self, if we do not honor the people whom God has placed on us, if we do not, if we fail to understand, you know, the heart of our leaders, so those things will cause us to, to our fall. So it's very important. I would encourage that, you know, maybe we could meditate on this verse, Matthew 6, 33, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all all these things will be added unto you. Yeah. So the cost that has to be paid in following the king and the kingdom, there are not more, only five points. So, you know, there are five points that we look at. The cost that has to be paid in following the king and the kingdom. First one, cost of patience and self-denial. So if we can, uh, somebody can read from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and another person can open Galatians 6, 9, and please, the third person can open Psalms 27, 14. So can we just read these verses, please? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Right. Yep. In what? Their children never have... So, so can you read again? So, yeah. They may have uh, many sons, but all will be killed in war. Their children never have enough to eat. Yeah. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Thank you. So it's, these three verses speak about cost of being patient. Let us not go weary in doing good. The current culture is a culture of instant gratification. We have two minutes noodles and instant coffee. We are unwilling to wait. We only think of the now. In doing so, we cut short many of the principles of God for instant gratification. 
so to be instantly gratified to instantly gratify ourselves we take many shortcuts right we don't have we don't have the patience to wait you know we want things now we want to we are unwilling to you know uh, hold on to the patience like okay fine a lot of time and that's what happened in gayaji's life as gayaji lost his blessing so we do so if we if we run for a instant gratification you know we might to land up like gayaji losing the blessing what was his blessing or what he might have had double portion of elisha elisha right and this as as a teenager it was uh, it was of very you know it, it caught my attention when uh, i was interested in like the prophetics and uh, uh, learning to grow in the word of god uh, so this story of elijah and elisha was very special kind of because you know there you see how uh, how elisha submitted or he was he humbled himself to do everything that that was needed right he was there without a hesitant he was there and this chapter uh, this story speaks about a character that he persevered his leader he persevered elijah wherever he went so it says there is a procedure in obtaining god's kingdom it is first of all necessary to embrace self denial our lust and passions must be crucified we should not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but we transform by the renewing of our minds then we will be able to test and approve what god's will is is good pleasing and perfect will so what happens when we say that you know cost of patience and self denial what is involved a lot of waiting a lot of uh, you know the waiting period is basically a time when all our inner issues are dealt with right god's kingdom is like like seed which takes time to grow it is also like yeast which takes time to live in if we receive our inheritance prematurely we will lose it just as a prodigal son did it just imagine having everything that you want when you were quite young you know and probably didn't have the understanding also of those things we would have not valued it so something that is is important you know to introspect or think about so something that we get prematurely also we will not enjoy it but god is saying that you know he gives at a perfect time he gives what is required to us he will bless us according to his perfect will so we learn to overcome the need for instant gratification and wait for the permanent long term benefit of the kingdom otherwise we will be like isau who sold his eternal valuable birthright for a bowl of stew to instantly satisfy his hunger so if you are not patient you might be doing something we should not be you know isau is a great example we should not run we should not do not hurry yes of course there are matters which are of urgent importance but you know we need to look at things which are important which are you know of right eternal valuable eternal value so it's very important so the cost of patience and self denial that's the first point that we need to uh, bear in mind we need to bore the character of self denial and also develop patience 
happiness. The second cost is whole heartedness. So the second cost is whole heartedness. It, it demands whole heartedness. The parable of the Eden treasure and the pearl of great value indicates that the people sold their all. Anything less than the whole would not allow them to obtain God's kingdom. It demands our all. There have been no other hidden agenda, no other goal, but only to seek his kingdom. Many people follow God and kingdom to obtain blessing and benefits. So many people or start also start trusting you know uh, they just follow because some benefit is there the the people probably are you know uh, helpful understanding cooperative so they see the benefit and they start attending the fellowship there are more interested they are more interested in their comfort and convenience so they have an agenda of health and wealth, but God is more interested in our character than our convenience. When God's kingdom comes in our lives, it brings order. And whenever there is, an, there is order, there is peace. And this peace, comfort and blessing is there to stay with us for a long time. It's, it, this peace and comfort is what, which God gives us is not temporary. It will be there with us for a long time even though we might go through some uh, tough situations in between but his comfort his peace his his joy will be in, present in those situations we see caleb who wholeheartedly and he uh, wholehearted and he ultimately inherited the choice portion of the land you know we know we know the story of caleb in second chronicle 69 um, sorry that's that's mentioned in joshua 14 1 to 15 when we read that portion we we learn that caleb you know he wholeheartedly followed and he ultimately inherited a choice land a land which was you know very good that land, uh, Hebron in the land of Canaan, right? The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So the, the cost of wholeheartedness is like you are, our total dependency shifts from what we have, the resources that we have, or the circle that we have, it shifts from that to God. He himself is our provider. He's, that's what he says in Matthew 6, 33, right? Seek me, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Everything will be added to him. So whatever we need or whatever is required, according to his purpose, he will give it to us without anything. But he's asking that the cost that we have, we need to have is wholeheartedness. He's not interested in the partial. You know, when... Uh, when we are ch child uh, children right the parents would tell us if you do this you will get this reward so it's not conditional you know it's not a conditional formatting he wants 100 percent of us he's not interested in our partial commitment he's not interested in our you know uh, seasonal commitments he wanted us all the time so the cost the third cost involves willingness. The first one we saw like the cost of patience and self-denial. Second cost of wholeheartedness. The third one is cost involves willingness. If you read uh, Matthew 16, chapter 16, verse 24 and 26, please. Somebody. Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26.
Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? What can someone give in exchange for their soul? Right. Thank you, Vaya. When we see the parallel of, uh, parable of hidden treasure and the pearl of great value, both the men went out and for the sheer joy of it sold all they had and purchased the field and the pearl. Note the sheer joy that indicates their willingness. You know, they went and sold everything just to have this. They had a revelation of the value of God's kingdom. They went all out for it. It did not cost them their all, but still it was a good bargain. You know, what they received in the kingdom was much more valuable than their all. Jesus said, if any man will follow me, it requires our will and willingness to follow him. He does not coerce us with coerce us, but we choose to follow him. You know, it's, it's, it's not like, like a taskmaster. It's not like a master and a slave relationship, right? We are not, you know, he is not looking at that aspect. He's saying, but he wanted us to willingly follow him. It's not like only when it's, like, it's not like in the office, right? Our manager will come and like, John, do this. And only then I will do. It's not like that. I know what is required and, you know, I will willingly do what is required to be done. So the willingness is more important. And that's, that's the aspect of our heart that God is looking at. That are we willing to pay the cost, whatever it might be. Whether it might be, you know, like we saw in the, uh, maybe in the last chapter, of influence of the kingdom, that it may be a call where he is asking you to be a missionary, or maybe a call is asking you to, you know, serve in specific area, sphere of this life, maybe among children or among orphanages or elderly. But that requires willingness. If we, if we are not ready, if we are not willing, now we will not be able to serve. Now we will not be able to see what uh, the work God, has, God wants us to do in those areas. Yep. So that's the cost, of, cost involved uh, of willingness, cost of willingness. So it's not easy because we, uh, we as humans, like we also have like our own idea, right? We want to do this. I want to enjoy this life. I want to go on a trip. I want to... Uh, you know, buy uh, buy a car. I want to have luxury life. Yes, as a humans, it's not that you know uh, somebody has to look down on us for any reason. But we feel that as humans. But the cost here is of willingness, right? God looks at our heart. He's looking at people who are willing to go for Him who is looking at people, for people who are willing to, who are wholeheartedly committed. You know, if, if he says, you know, this area you have to work, they will go and work. I initially remember when, uh, again, going back to the teenage times, and I think it still continues with me. Like, when we say, like, you know, in the church you have to do something, the, my first, uh, the first pastor said, you know, okay, fine, you're interested, come, clean the chairs, right? Even before I could start leading worship, my first instruction was clean the chairs. And that I did for one year. After that, he gave me a turn to worship, lead worship. It's a test. If we are not willing to go through that process, is it difficult to serve in the kingdom of God? And I thank God that, you know, that we are given good leaders who are willing to lead us in the right, right direction. So, when we, and when we go to them, we are under their cover, right? So, they will lead us, they, are, they will guide us. 
so we do not have to worry even though they might be going through a challenge themselves but you know they are and we are under their prayer covers so our willingness to share our willingness to be open to serve is important the fourth cost demands are all in matthew uh, if you can read matthew 19:24 One second. Can we read, it, read that again, please? Yeah. I repeat, it is much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Then for then for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Right. Thank you. Here Jesus is telling his disciples that it's hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they have everything. They may not at that moment of time when they have everything. is very difficult to remember god is very difficult i think to even humble ourselves right something that we achieve and we are very proud of so the cost demands are all kingdom of god will challenge our every right in every area of our life it includes a priority my family my leisure my job my career my f- future my relationship my finances etc it it will it will it involves everything all are to be brought under the purview of the kingdom now when we see at elisha he didn't even think you know when he got the first mantle and when we read the first reference you know he cut the bulls took and gave it he he made a sacrifice of the plow that he had you know he immediately started plowing and then he cut the poles and feeds the people so it it involves everything it's all in all it's like i need to leave my reservation and prejudice the gate is narrow and the narrow and the narrow is the way we cannot carry a baggage of ours the rich man cannot enter it either because jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of god to give her all should not be a problem because our god himself has given you know his only begotten son for us so has family of god as body of christ to give our all should not be a question it should not be a even a thought for a second should i you know should i do or should i not do he says our god has done that he has sent his begotten son for us he led the way so it is right for him to expect the same from us the words of the song uh, by isaac watts say love so amazing so divine divine uh, demands my soul my life my all you know we we might be familiar with the song it says love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all so one of the cost the fourth cost is you know it demands our all the last one it involves carrying the heart of another 
it involves carrying the heart of another so people like gazi did he have the heart to carry elisha's mindset no yes he had his own interest he was impatient he wanted to overtake rather overtake what elisha has established so people like gazi joins the kingdom to look after their own interest so this morning you know uh as a retrospect introspect that what is our interest are we looking after our own interest are we worried over of our own family of myself me myself my family or the kingdom of god but god is looking for the faithful who will forego their own interest and look after interest of another god is looking for people who will who will who are willing to forego their own interest and look after the interest of another jesus said he who saves his life will lose it and he who loses his life for my sake will find it we see that in 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 a uh, in philippians 2 2021 where paul speaks about timothy i have no one else like him who takes genuine interest in your welfare for everyone looks out for his own interest not those of jesus christ but timothy has proved himself as a son with his father he has served me in the work of the gospel so here we see another example where like elisha carried the heart of elijah here we see timothy also you know doing the same paul is up, is is speaking out is mentioned out is is put it down that what it means to carry the heart of another so similarly we can see three principles of faithfulness as given in luke 6:10 you know faithful in little will be entrusted with more faithful in handling ordinary things will be entrusted with true riches faithful in handling some someone's property will be given property of his own so this principle of faithfulness uh, further highlights about responsibility and accountability that is responsible for someone responsible for something and accountable to someone so if you are faithful if you are you know looking for to take up this cost that that you know the cost of the cost of kingdom is not free is costly is not is not easy is difficult because you need to submit you need to uh give your whole heart you need to be willing you need to forego you need to be you need to uh, you know uh be patient deny yourself the question is this principle of carrying the heart of another highlights another quality of honoring and receiving it's not just one way right you are honoring and you receive the one who has been placed over us by the lord jesus said he who receives you receives me matthew 10:40 we can uh, you know give us a reference so our respect to our leader is actually our respect to the lord himself then the lord will be willing to give such a person the kingdom you know to govern so the kingdom is only given to those who are willing to pay the price it's not given to everybody if we are not willing then we should not expect that you know why i am not given that role why i am not allowed to do that thing you know, because first we need to pay the price we need to pay the cost we need to understand what is required of it 
to be there. It means living for another. But when we do know, uh, but when we do that, our God anoints us. You know, when we obey our leaders, when we respect our leaders with our wholeheartedness, with our whole heart, with with a willing heart, with a self denial heart. You know, if and we are perceiving with patience, God anoints us, promotes us, blesses us, prospers us, and shares His own glory and honor. That we can read in John 17, right? So it's very important to understand the cost of the kingdom. Now these are the five principles that we uh, we are seeing through. You know, God is looking for faithful who who will forego their own interest and look at the interest of another. We see in examples like Joshua carried the heart of Moses, Timothy carried the heart of Paul. And Elijah carried the heart of Elisha. Elisha carried the heart of Elijah. And we see Gehazi did not carry the heart of Elisha. And that's where you were struck with uh, the leprosy of Naaman. It's very important that uh, that we, you know, uh, equate the cost. It's very important that we know what the cost is. What are we called for, and and what are we asking? on ourselves is just like saying that you know is not everything is beneficial right some things are but not everything is beneficial so let's ask god to uh, build us you know that that as we become as we see those in the beatitudes you know as we saw in the last chapters or like influence of the kingdom that we are supposed to be the salt and light and when we have those characteristics in our heart in our life then we you know uh, bearing the cost is not a challenge but if our heart is not set right if our attitudes are not set right you know if our focus is not set right then there will be a challenge we will there will be a trouble to submit wholeheartedly there will be a trouble in doing things willingly there'll be a trouble to deny ourselves there'll be a trouble you know to be patient we will react like those now instant we will be very impatient and that will that will cause us to lose you know what god actually want to bless us with so as we saw like you know in the end that those who are ready to bear the cost god promotes god blesses god anoints and god lifts us up right so, yep. So that's the cost that we need to look at. I'll ask uh, Bayar to come and just close in prayer, please.